and hello everyone welcome back to your next Lua tutorial so we all so we have worked with if statements and stuff like that today we will be working with loops so Lua itself is amazing I love the language it's just perfect you know what makes the language even better the loops loops are basically everything in programming for the most part so let's start with what a for loop is so basically a for loop is for let's say i is equal to 1 and then we can say 10 and 1 I'm going to explain this in a second don't be frightened just yet do and I actually have to complete it after all, which is really nice and here I can just say print i and if we run this so just lua and then main dot lua and we get all numbers from 1 to 10 that's amazing what did we do basically we said okay Create a variable called i, and it's, this is by default, it's local scope, so which means we can't print i here. That's not possible. So you can see we get nil. Because i here, that's local scope, it's by default. Anyways, then you say, okay, start at number 1, and go on, go up until 10. I think actually this value right here, that's even optional, so you can just do that, and by default it will go and move it by 1. But anyways, so, and it says go through 1 to 10. Just, just print out the values 1 to 10 and store it inside of this variable. So this variable gets reassigned every time this loop runs. So then it goes here, okay, prints 1. It sees ends, it goes back to the top, it goes here, okay. Now this turns into 2 because it goes plus 1. Goes here, print 2, end, okay, goes back here, i becomes 3, goes back, goes here, print 3, i becomes 4, and it just continues like that. By adding another number, you can say how many steps as you go through the loop by. So if we say 2, then we get 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, because now it's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now it's 1, skip 2, 3, skip 4, 5, skip 6, 7, skip 8, 9, skip 10. We also do 3, so if you want to move it by 3 steps, that's totally possible. If you want to move it by 2 steps, but you want to make it count only the double values, we can even start here with 2 then. That's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. This can go as far as you want it to go, so let's make it a 1,000. No problem with that. We can even make this step 1 again, and we can even make this like that. And it can do it. It can handle it. So, yeah, that's basically the basics of a for loop. You can also reverse a for loop. So let's say we wanted to count down. We kind of wanted to count backwards. You might think, okay, we get 10 and 1. But... And you can see it actually already gives you an error, it's like, what's happening here? Because if we were to try to run this, it just won't do it, because it's starting at 10 and has to go to 1. So it's basically checking, okay, it, it sets i to 10, then it says, okay, is i more or equal to 10? So basically before it runs anything, it basically has an invisible if statement right here. And it says, if i is less or equal, to and then the value that that's basically here so let's say that's one then it prints this one so it has an invisible if statement that we can't see it's been given to us and then it runs but the problem is 10 is not less or equal to one 10 is 10 it's more than one so this right here that will become an invalid if statement so what we have to do is we have to say the steps should go backwards so now it's going to say, ah, okay, I understand. So if i is more or equal to 1, then you do it. So that's basically what's going to happen here. I'm going to remove that if statement because it's kind of unnecessary to have it. So yeah, let's run this and count backwards. Now it's 10 all the way to 1. That's pretty cool. I'm going to move this closer. So that's pretty cool. So that's kind of how you count, count, that's kind of how you can count backwards. You can, of course, I guess, decrease this value, so make it negative 2, and it will count down by negative 2 until wherever you want it to. Of course, you don't need to specify everything right here, so if you wanted to, we can go and set star, and we can make it local. Local start val and then end val, and then we want to do step val. And I'm just going to put them all in one line. So I'm going to go 1, 10, and I'm just going to go 1. So of course, you didn't have to put them all in one line. I just did it because it's faster. You could have made them all 
on their own separate lines. So if I, you don't understand what's going on here, basically this value gets set to 1, this value gets set to 10, this value gets set to 1 back here. Basically, they get set to these values in their order. So here we can just say start val, end val, and step val. Doing that runs perfectly fine. You can use variables. We got remember variables are just containers. They just contain the value. That's all that it, that's all they are. They just contain a value. Just container. So yeah. You can also loop through an array. So here we can go and create an array. So let's go local r and we can make that equal to uh, two, three, and let's just add some random values here. Okay, there we go. So random values added. Now what we can do is we can say, okay, i starts at 1 until the length of this array. So I'm just going to say hashtag r. And now here, base, uh, I mean that was supposed to be 1. Anyways, now here we can say r at index i. And I know I really haven't covered arrays or tables or anything like that, but this is kind of for future reference. Basically, arrays are like variables, but they can contain multiple variables. You don't have to worry about them right now. Just I'm just showing this to you now. So in the future, you know what to do. I'll also cover them in the future, probably. Run that, and we get all of the values inside of this list, this array. So basically, this array right here is just like an array of variables. Array of, it's like a bunch of variables in stored inside of one variable. That's kind of all that's happening here. Not going to be covered in today. That's not our goal here. Okay, so you might be wondering, okay, but is for loop all we can do? Because that kind of isn't always that useful. Maybe we want like an infinite loop that's going to be more difficult to get with a for loop. Well, yeah, we can. So let's say we have a variable called peeps. And peeps just stands for people. Let's say we have uh, 10 people. So that's how many people is in the building. So then we can say while. So this is a while loop. And while this value right here is true, it will run. So let's say while peeps is more than zero. So while peeps is basically not zero. While there is or no zero people in the in this in this location. So let's say this is inside of my house. We're having a party. Ten people are there. While there are still at least one person at the party, we run this loop. So then we can say print people left at party and we can just go here and add peeps before that i just want to say peeps is equal to peeps oh my word peeps minus one now if we were to run this for loop People at the party, nine, all the way until zero. So once zero gets hit, it's over. Of course, we could infinite loop this. So if we wanted to, we could just, in fact, I'm just going to print out something here. Print and loop. I'm just going to say this is true. And that's going to infinite loop because while this is true, so while that value there is true, it's going to run this loop. And since we don't set it to false, it's just going to run this loop forever until I guess my PC crashes or something. Which has happened while I could Lua, so I, I don't want to attempt that. So yeah, that's kind of a while loop. So you can always do something like if you think, okay, that's okay, but you, you can do more things. Like a game kind of uses a while loop. An application, let's say run. So, oh gosh, that should be run. Run is equal to true, right? So, while the application is running, so run, so while it should run, it should do the game, the application things. So, I'm just going to create another wheel here and say local runtime or something, and I'm going to make that to zero. And let's say we print. Oh, gosh, running here. So this allows us to see that it's running. Then you can say if, and let's say runtime, if runtime is equal to 10, 
then we want to break out of this loop. So I'm just going to say run is equal to false. Because only, remember this while loop only runs while run is true. So while this value here is true. So we make it false, it's not going to run anymore. And then here we can just say runtime is equal to runtime plus one. Now, if we were to run this, it's going to run for 10 runtimes. So yeah, that's kind of a basic application loop here. So you run until you hit the value or something that you want and you break out of it. I can actually show you a real example of a, of a loop like this if you want to see it. If you don't, you can skip to the next timestamp if I include it, please feature me. Anyways, so to do that, I'm just going to open up a new terminal here. And I'll show you an example of where you actually use it. I didn't actually have an example in Lua, but uh, anyways. So this is actually an open source application I made. I'm going to open up uh, Sublime Text because I didn't really need to open up here. And I'm just going to open up main.c++. I'm going to show you where I would use a while loop. Because this application basically just runs a program until exited. Exit so here, while running. So this is a variable and it's while the application is running. So you can do all of this until this running here gets returned and set to false. Then this while loop is going to break out and it's going to break out of the application. If you don't know C++, don't worry, we're not going to cover C++. But basically this is an application loop. If you want to see this application in action, here we go. There's the application in action. Now I'm going to choose a playlist to play. I want, maybe want to cancel. As soon as I exit here, it's going to exit out of that application itself. So exit. So yeah, that's kind of how a while loop can be useful. You can actually create function applications with it. So we have one loop that I that you can definitely find useful. So you have a repeat until. So let's print. Oh, I should print until there first. So let's say until x is more than 10. Let's just do that. I'm going to put x there now. And I'm going to print hey there. And then I'm going to say well x is equal to x plus 1. Or yeah, plus 1. And here I'm going to create a local variable x. Local x is equal to 1. Okay. Let's run this and see what happens. We get hey there. Now you might be wondering, okay, but what's the point? We have a while loop. Why would we use this? Well, let's quickly see the difference between a while loop. Let's create a while loop here. Anyway, there you go. It just prints it out normally. So basically what's happening here is we're saying, okay, while well, x is less than 10, just print everything out. Now to repeat loop, we're saying, okay, print this out while or until x reaches this. So it's basically the same as a while loop, but this code will run at least one time. So to give you an example, so here it says while well, x is less than 10. So if we make x equal to 11, for example, it's no longer less than 10. It won't even consider running that while loop. But if we were to comment that while loop out and do this, it's going to run that loop at least one time, at least once. So basically, it's saying, okay, run this, and then checks, okay, is x more than 10? Oh, yes, it is. Then breaks out of the loop. So yeah, that the repeat loop basically is just a while loop, but it runs at least one time. At least once. So yeah, it just repeats until it reaches this. And just take note, if we were to do this, repeat, and let's just say false here. Print hello. Okay, you have five seconds. Tell me what's going to happen in this piece of code. Comment it down below. Do whatever. Time's up. Okay, so we get an infinite loop. But why is that? Because when we did it with the while loop, when we set this while loop to true, it continuously runs. But this one, if we set it to false, it continuously runs. What's happening here? Basically, it checks until this value right here becomes true. So once this re is true, it stops the loop. Because you think about it, so if we set x equal to 1, then it goes here. Okay, is x more than 10? No, x is not more than 10. Continue with the loop. Because it's until then. So 
this is basically it works with a false this works with a true so you should just keep that in mind that repeat loops work with false values while while loops work with true values but for the most part if you practice them you don't even recognize it anymore notice it anymore so yeah that is loops i hope you guys enjoyed and understood and yeah i will see you all again in the next video